all praises to the Most High. Good to be with you again, brothers and sisters. I'm your host, the Apostle Reuben of IUPR Bible Radio, podcasting out of Little Rock, Arkansas, to the true saints of the Most High God. Now, brothers and sisters, we're at 1 Kings 8.32, and we're here for a reason. This is not going to be too long of a podcast episode. I just want to point out a few key points. Now, before we read 1 Kings 8.32, now, if you Google certain things, brothers and sisters, they give you the information. And what I Googled was, what is the Christian meaning for justification? Well, actually, I said justify. The Christian meaning of being justified. That's what I typed in. And this is what came up. I want you to pay attention. In Christianity, justification justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty of sin. You see all these? You see all you see how this works? I, let me let me not get so emotional about it. It's the passion. Cuz I that that right there doesn't even make sense. It's a central part of the Christian message. Yes, that is the only, well, I would say the first part of the Christian message. And a reversal of God's attitude towards sinners. A reversal, which means he changed. A reversal means God changed. But we thought, Malachi, Malachi 3, verse 6. Let's get right to it. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. According to this verse, God doesn't change. Oh, Hebrews, hold on, Hebrews 13. We want to make sure we get it all, brothers and sisters. Hebrews 13. In verse 8, just the key points. The Messiah Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So we're reading about God not changing. Christ being the same yesterday, which is in the Old Testament today as we speak, and he's going to be the same forever. He's not going to change. So God is unchanging. But as we read in Christianity, justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous. Really, declaring a sinner righteous. He's just going to declare those who transgress the law righteous and free from the penalty of sin. But whoa, 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 Hebrews. See, when these ignoramuses of our people, brothers and sisters, <laughs> our people, it's a reason why they look like this. Because they look to these men for a form of salvation. Or these men. The beautiful, wonderful words they teach each and every Sunday morning that amounts to nothing. There is no chapter or verse with this commentary. Let me go back. There is no chapter and verse with this commentary because it's not true. And we're going to prove it. We prove all things, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21. But let me read it again. In Christianity, justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty of sin. It's a central part of the Christian message. It's a sin. Oh, God loves sinners. God loves sin. But when we go to the back of the Bible, did he? 
in order in order for God to love sinners now he had to love them in the past but when we read the book of Psalms Psalms 5 and verse 5. Psalms 5 and 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest, not lovest, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. God hates the sinner with the sin. These pastors say, oh, God hates the sin, but not the sinner. This verse says he hates them both. A minute now. Psalms 11 and 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, which is the sinner, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. So God hates the sinner. The wicked is a man or a woman. The wicked goes to people. And him that loveth violence, because violence comes from sin, his soul hates. God hates sinners. Mm. <clears throat> Psalms 10 and 2. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. That's who persecuting the poor, the poor of Israel. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesses the covetous. See, we tell you, brothers and sisters, all the time, if you don't get it, you don't get it, but the wicked blesses the covetous. The white blesses the black. That's what that's talking about. These men are rich because of him. See, when the Bible says, we know the truth. The Bible says, for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhorreth means hate. The Lord hates sinners. Covetous is the breaking of the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. So God hates sinners. He hates them. But all of a sudden, in Christianity, justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty of sin. Oh. It's a central part of the Christian message. Yeah. And a reversal change of God's attitude towards sinners. It's a change, a change. God changed his attitude towards sinners. He hated them in the Old Testament, but all of a sudden now he doesn't. So let's let's look at this because. America, I say it like that, Babylon the Great, they teach a change in God, change, a God that changes. But we read in Malachi 3, verse 6, Hebrews 13 and 8, that this God did not change. I mean, James, what's James? I think one, James 1, Verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He doesn't change.
the judgment that was in the Old Testament is going to be the judgment in the New. First Peter. First Peter. Three and twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So the Lord is against them still that do evil. Sin. Now, evil. That's John 7. Before I do this, I'm going to show you that the Lord is against evil. John 7. Now, these are the key points. John 7. We're going to read verse 7. I'm just pointing out key points, precepts. You know how we do it. John 7 and 6. Then the Messiah said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Christ was against evil. But what is evil? What is evil defined by in this text? Let's, let's see who does the evil. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Just I'm just taking you to, through a few to show you. They'll never do this. Evil men understand not judgment. There you go. Judgment is the law. Evil men do not understand the law. That is why 90% of those TikTok lives are agents. They're sent out there. I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, they have no YouTube channel. They have nothing. They're not doing anything but doing a lie. Follow a bunch of people or just cast out there to deceive because they don't know anything. How did they get a 1,000 followers? They never did. They were set out there. You think that they got them, but they were just set out there. Evil men understand not the law, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. They that seek, what does it mean to seek him? Second Chronicles. I show you everything because I want you to know that when it says seek, a Christian may be like, well, it says seek. Well, what does seek mean? Second Chronicles 14, verse 4. And I commanded Judah to seek the Lord their God, to seek the Lord God of their father. Excuse me. Seek. And I commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and do all the law and the commandments. To seek God was to keep the law. That's why in Psalms, we know what seeking God means. That's why in Psalms, chapter 119, we know what it means to seek God. Psalms 119 and 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with the whole heart. Seek when you're keeping God's laws, you're seeking him. Back to Proverbs. Back to Proverbs. 28. And verse 5 again, then we're going to move on. Proverbs 28 and 5. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord, which is keep his laws, understand all things. And you're going to see how important that is in the future. Let's go to chapter over. It's Proverbs 29 and 6. Who's doing this evil? Proverbs 29 and 6. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. So that that's who's doing the evil. That's who's doing the evil. The sinner. In the transgression, what is what is he transgressing? The law. 
In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. There is a snare. But the righteous doth sing and rejoice. So, okay. Let's look in the Bible. Psalms. Psalms 37. Verse 30. Psalms 37 and 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The law of God is in the mouth of the righteous. When it says the law of God is in his heart, his heart is going to come out through his mouth. So according to the Old Testament, as they say, a law keeper was righteous. A law keeper was righteous. Let's just go to, hold on, let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3, real quick. Verse 21, nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, the righteous man doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. A righteous man does not sin. A righteous man will not sin. He shall surely live. That's eternal life. A minute now. Wait a minute. Luke 1. You knew I was, it, most of you knew I was going here. Luke 1 and 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. To be righteous was to keep the law. But but at, but at this at now, through Christ, as they say, in Christianity, justification is an act of God, of God declaring a sinner righteous. Wait a minute, they had to do. Look, <sighs> okay, okay. First John, First John, two. Verse 29, and I'm going to read 1 John 3 and 7. 1 John 2, 29. I want to read this for a reason. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Everybody that doeth righteousness. Do means do is an act. Do is born of him. Doeth righteousness. Not de just declared righteous. No, do. First John three and seven. This goes, and I promise you, brothers and sisters, this verse goes against this right here. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to read this again. In Christianity, justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty of sin. It's a central part of the Christian lie, not message, lie. And a reversal, which means God has changed. Reversal of God's attitude towards sinners. So they teach that God declared them righteous as sinners, and they also teach he changed. I'm here to tell you, it's a lie. And only the foolish Negro is going to fall for it. Go up here to the Bible. Little children, let no, let 
no man deceive you. Because that's who's trying to deceive you, along with their boys. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Doesn't look like, according to this verse, God just declared you righteous. You had to do it. That's why we told you these Christians are liars. And Christianity is a religion to guide people to death. That's what it is. It's a death religion. They just lie. You just see the lie. God declared them righteous. No. First John 3 and 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth, which means you have to do righteousness to be righteous. You have to do righteousness to be righteous, even as he, which is Christ, is righteous. So you had to do it. Hmm. Matthew 9, 13, once again. Matthew 9, verse 13. Let's get into this. Matthew 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy, not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, Ooh. but sinners to repentance. Ah. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. It does not look repentance. Sinners, sin, excuse me, center, sinners ha, to repentance. Sinners to repentance. Repentance. So sinners have to repent. That is not what this says. This says he declared them righteous and free from the penalty of sins. That doesn't look like what's going on here, brothers and sisters. Christ said sinners have to repent of what? Of what? Let's get Luke. Luke 7. Let's get Luke. Because I really don't want to... Um, just go into things and go, go, go. And I, I am kind of wrong for this, brothers and sisters, because I'm kind of going out of the way, and this is not supposed to be such a long podcast episode. But I want to go to the book of Luke, chapter 15. What are they repenting of? What are they repenting of? Then we're going to take a look at the repentance. Luke 15 and verse 10. Let's see what they're repenting of. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels, angels of God over one sinner, sinner that repenteth, repenteth. So a sinner has to repent. Hold up. Let's go back to verse seven. I say unto you, he's going, I'm, I should have read this one first, but. Likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So how is it that you didn't need repentance? Because you were just. It says a just person doesn't need repentance. A just person doesn't need repentance. A just person, okay now. A just person doesn't need repentance, Ezekiel 18. A just person, he needs no repentance. Again, behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But if a man be just, here we go. This who needs this is the man or woman that doesn't need repent, repentance because he is going to tell you what just is. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. Ah, so a law keeper is just. That's who doesn't need to repent. A law keeper. He needs no repentance because he's keeping the law. Hmm. 
interesting when you define what just is. He hath, let me let, let me go back to Ezekiel 18 and 9. Hath walked in my statutes and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. Again, the Bible is calling law keepers just. Hmm. This is the this is a declaration you can read by chapter and verse. God declared those that kept the law just. In other words, justified. The lawkeeper was justified in the Old Testament. And they didn't need repentance. So, repent. Again, repent of what? Ezekiel 18 and 30, one more time. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. This has nothing to do with all nations. Every one of you, according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn. He's, this is what repent means. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Ah, so iniquity, which is sin, is going to ruin you. But you're supposed to turn from transgressing the law. To repent is to turn from transgressing law. That's what it is. When you repent, you repent of transgressing God's law. Because that's what transgressions are. Breaking of the law. A just man keeps it, so he's justified. A sinner breaks it, so he has to repent. That simple. Now, Acts 3.19, we're going to show you again. I'm going to blow the top off of this. Acts 3.19. And before I read Acts 3.19, justified. In Christianity, justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty and free from the penalty of sin, which means he's been forgiven. But I'm going to show you this is a lie again. I'm blowing the top off of this. This is this came from him. Edom. It came from the white man. It's a slavery doctrine given to our people. Ever since this time right here, ever since slavery, this doctrine has been out there because Caucasians had to justify themselves on why they were hurting our people. This is how those doctrines came up. And over the course of time, we've went from this form of a slave that wanted to read the Bible to now emotion. We don't even care to read it. This is what church looks like today. Inside the building, outside the building. Depression. We're looking at Repent, Acts 319. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Wait a minute. You have to repent and be converted for your sins not to count against you. These Caucasian Christians are teaching that you're free from the penalty of sin. No, no, no. You're not free from anything unless you repent and your sins be blotted out by your repentance and being converted and being converted. You have to repent, which is turn from transgressing the law and be converted by what? This is why we tell you, brothers and sisters, you're looking at the end of the world here. And the guider of the end of the world is the Caucasian race. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 
converting. Ah, so the law converts you. The law converts you. The testimonies of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's what converts you. So I just want to stop back by Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18, verse 5. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. A just man. Hold up, hold up. Hath walked in my statutes and have kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live. That's. Eternal life, saith the Lord God. Just. If he keeps the law, he's just. Pay attention. Don't tell me we don't know. Romans 2. Romans 2. Verse 13. I'm just reading these one verses. This is the precept night for the Bible. Romans chapter 2. Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Just is the same as justified. Just is the same as justified. Justified just means just. It's no special word, justification there. Whether it's justification, justified, whatever, it just means just. And according to Ezekiel 18, 5 and 9, you're just or justified when you were keeping the law. Now, what again? First Kings. We're back here. Eight. First Kings eight. Verse 32, just getting the precept. Giving you the ammunition. To take them out. Then hear thou in heaven and do and judge my servants, which are Israelite, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous <sighs> to give him according to his righteousness. Looks like God is justifying the righteous. Who are the righteous in the Old Testament? Come on now. I'm asking that for a reason. We just read Psalms. Back to Psalms. Psalms 37. Hmm. Verse 30. Proof. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his mind. None of his steps shall slide. The law of God is in the mind of a righteous man. The law is in the heart of a righteous man. Even in Proverbs, I, I love this one in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. So the thoughts of the righteous are right. The thoughts of the righteous are right. Well, Deuteronomy. I decided to go here. Deuteronomy 6. Verse 17, ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. 
that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. The right thing was in the law. He said, and thou shalt do that which is right. So the thoughts of the righteous are right, and the right comes from the law. There's no way you can separate the righteous from the law. If you kept the law, you were righteous. Ezekiel 3 again. I'm going back over these. We give you proof who the righteous are. Ezekiel 3 and verse 21. Once again, nevertheless, if thou warn the, the righteous man that he, excuse me, that he, that the righteous, excuse me, sinneth not. So nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous man sin not, and he doth not sin, oh, he shall surely live. Y'all think that live is talking about just live on. No, that's eternal life. Because he is warned, and thou hast delivered thy soul. The righteous man will not sin. He's not sinning. And again, Luke 1. Luke 1. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. To be righteous and to keep the law. To be righteous means to keep the law. So when we go back to 1 Peter 3 and 12, I didn't forget about 1 Peter 3 and 12. I want to go back to it. 1 Peter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. But the Lord is against the, the but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, which means God has not declared sinners righteous. He did not do that. The Caucasians made this up to justify what they did to us in slavery. They tried to make themselves righteous. And we have people that believe they are or could be. No, they made it up. God is still against them that sin because that, that's what the do evil is. And in case you forgot. Proverbs, just real quick. I run back over them just for you, brothers. This is Proverbs 29 and 6. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. Evil. So evil men transgress the law. Evil men transgress God's laws. That's an evil man. And Christ was against them in John 7 and 7. But I want to do this so I get it clear to you. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. See, a sinner is who's doing the evil. A sinner, a sinner... A sinner is them that do evil. So evil is being done by a sinner. So back, back to 1 Peter. Read this carefully, 1 Peter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do sin because that's what evil is that's who's doing the evil sinners so the lord is still against sinners according to first peter 3 and 12 hebrews 10 26 let's i'm going to keep mentioning this one For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, which is in the law, Romans 2 and 20, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for, of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the sinners. That's who the adversaries are. The sinners, the adversaries of God are sinners.
An adversary is an enemy. So if, if we're going to talk about who's an enemy of God, let's get the book of Acts. 13. Easily, brothers and sisters, can be proven word for word. That's how you have to do it. So they can't escape. Acts 13 and 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Now he's talking about Elimus, the sorcerer, and said, O full of subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. So he was filled with all mischief. He was filled with all mischief. He was filled with all mischief. Psalms 119. Mischief now. Psalms 119. Verse 50. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. Mischief now. They are far from thy law. A man or a woman of mischief is far from God's law. So a man or a woman that's in mischief breaks God's law. Again, mischief, sinner. A man of mischief is a transgressor of the law. So when Paul says in Acts, Acts 13, watch, watch the wording. Look at the wording. We're showing you who the enemy of God is. Acts 13 and 10. He's talking to the the sorcerer and said, O full of subtlety and all sin, thou child of the devil. Why child of the devil? Child of the devil. Again, 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. If you transgress God's law, you are of the devil. <laughs> Acts 13 and 10 again. And said, O full of subtlety and all mischief, all sin, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness enemy he's an enemy of God because of sin wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways the right ways of the laws we just read what is right and good Deuteronomy 618 and that was the law of the Lord the right ways are his laws so he was perverting the right ways of the Lord which are his laws he was an enemy an adversary of God because he was a sinner. That's why in Hebrews, once again, you got to know what you're reading. Hebrews 10. You talk about context, it ain't even about that to them. It's just interpreting what they want and deceiving. Or I should say deception. If we sin willfully after, after, if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. The adversaries were the ones that sinned willfully. Easy as that. And again, this proves right here. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Again, meaning this is false. Justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous and free from the penalty of sin. That's a lie. We just read Hebrews 10, 26 and 27. If you continue in sin, you're going to be burned. He did not declare a sinner righteous. So their meaning of justification is that, let me not give it up. Let me not give it up yet. 
Let me not give it up yet. But we still have to go back and understand. And I'm doing this for a reason. I know people forget the thought. People forget the thought. They forget it. Ezekiel 18 verse 5, but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So a man that's justified keeps the law, hath walked in my statutes and have kept my judgments to deal truly he is just. If you keep God's laws, you're just, which is justified. First Kings 832. Then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying, justifying the righteous, which is the law keeper. To give him according to his righteousness. So God justifies the law keeper. The law keeper is just. And Paul didn't disappoint us. Romans. He agreed. Romans 2. Romans 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The doers of the law shall be justified. The doers, doers. That's why, again, in 1 John. 1 John 3, verse 7. Oh, man. That's why John said this. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. You're not declared righteous from God because you exist and free from the penalty of sins. The Bible says that if you do righteousness, you're righteous. This is a lie. God, the act of God of declaring a sinner righteous. He never declared a sinner righteous. No, he did not. If you do righteousness, you're righteous. Not that you're declared righteous by God. Little children, let no man deceive you. These people were built to deceive. They're putting that crap out there. John said, no, you have to do righteousness to be righteous. You're not declared righteous. You have to do it. So when we go back to Romans 2, Romans 2, Romans 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified, which is just. If you do the law, you're just. Why? 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 Romans 7. Romans 7. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. The law is justified itself. The law is justified by itself. It's just. And anybody that keep it will be just as it is just. That's why Christ said once again in Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked, which are the sinners from among the just. Hmm. What's he going to do with the wicked? Because if God... If God was justifying the wicked, which are the sinners, if he justified those wicked, he wouldn't be casting them into a furnace of fire. Which means God still counts them guilty for their sin. Brothers and sisters, you have to understand what you're reading. God never justified sinners and made them righteous. 
or declared a sinner righteous, they're going to die in the lake still. According to the text, a righteous man is a law keeper. But the Christians, they had to come up with a doctrine or just certain sayings to say, ah, how can we fix that? How can we turn that around in their councils, that they, in their secret councils? of persuasion. See, we know, according to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4, and we're going to read verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should not go in the land whether ye go. Let me read that again, because I read that wrong. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord the Lord, my God, commanded me that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. The law, the law, keeping the law was the wisdom of the children of Israel. Keeping the law was the wisdom of the children of Israel. And your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. The law was given to Israel so they could show the other nations that keeping the law of their God would make them wise and understanding. So wisdom came from the law, and you know Psalms 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. So when you fear the Lord, you're keeping the law. So wait a minute. Psalms 111 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is in the keeping of the law. There is no other wisdom besides the keeping of the law. We're proving it. Wisdom comes from the keeping of law. Wisdom is the understanding of the keeping and doing of the law. That's where wisdom comes from. There's no other wisdom. So when we go to Matthew 11, Matthew 11, verse 18, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a, glut, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. That's what, they, they, that's what they accuse Christ of. You were eating too much, drinking too much wine, and you're a friend of sinners. But Christ says, but wisdom, where does wisdom come from? The law is justified. Wisdom, which comes from the law, is justified of her children. So those that have wisdom in keeping the law, you're justified. Because when it says, but wisdom is justified of her children, those that have wisdom among the children are justified. Again, wisdom comes from the law and those that keep it are justified. How many times do you have to see that a law keeper is justified? We're telling you it over and over. Whether it be just or justified, a law keeper was justified. A sinner was not justified. So I wonder, brothers and sisters, when I read I'm when I go to Acts 17. Acts 17, and, I, and I'm, always, I'm always perplexed about this. 
Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia. Now, brothers and sisters, I read Scripture and Old Testament verses over and over and over again for a reason. Because it fits together in a knit. I'm showing you how to use it where you need to use it. And when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Reason with them out of the Scriptures. Scripture. Scripture, Scriptures. It's the same. The word, is, the word as used in the Bible refers almost invariably to the sacred writings, which at that time consisted of the Old Testament only. At Paul's time, at Paul's time, the scriptures were the Old Testament only. So the scriptures are the Old Testament. So when we go back to Acts 17, verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Old Testament. Paul's using the Old Testament. We don't get it. He's. <laughs> but this I confess unto thee, Paul, again, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship, worship. I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul believed everything in the Old Testament, the Scripture. And again, Acts 26, 22, Paul again, having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day witnessing both the small and great, saying none other thing, nothing else, than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Paul didn't speak anything else except the Old Testament. Over and over. Over and over. Over and over. Over. Acts 28, 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning the Messiah, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening. Again, Acts 17 and 2. Acts 24, 14. Acts 26, 22. And right here tells us all day that Paul used the Old Testament when he taught. He used the Old Testament when he taught. So Paul knew the Old Testament. If Paul knew the Old Testament, why did he say in Galatians 2, why did he say in Galatians 2, verse 16, knowing this, that a man is not justified by the works of the law? Wait a minute. That's not right. We, we went over the scriptures twice that you, if you kept the law, were just. And Paul said in Romans 2.13, you're just if you keep the law. But now he's saying you're not just if you keep the law. Hmm. See, brothers and sisters, these are the verses the Christians are using to apply God changed. Because God would have to change in order for this verse. God would have to change in order for this verse to be. And, I, and, I, and, 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 and the verse is valid, but it's being misused by Christians. It's being heavily misused because we know you're justified or just by the law. Ezekiel 18, 5 and 9. Ezekiel 18, verses 5 and verses 9. 
say you're just if you keep the law. First Kings 8, 32 says justifying the righteous. Paul in Romans 2, 13 says you're justified by keeping law. Christ in Matthew eleven nineteen 19 says wisdom, which comes from the law, is justified of her children. So we see justification in those that keep the law. Paul being a master of the Old Testament, as we have read, Acts 17 and 2, Acts 24, 14, Acts 26, 22, and Acts 28, 33. He's a master of the law. So you mean to tell me he did not see that law keepers were justified in the Old Testament, the scripture? Sure he did. He knew that law keepers were justified. That's why he said right here in Romans. Paul agreed, but you see, we're going to show you something. Romans 2 verse 13 for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified because they were justified in the Old Testament Christ agreed in Matthew eleven nineteen. 19 those that had the wisdom which came from the law were justified of the children that had it over and over we see justification or the just as law keepers now, all of a sudden, a Christian wants to get, skip everything we say, because a lot of Christians didn't want to hear. They heard what we were teaching, but they went all off of it and shrugged it off. That's why I said they're going to die for that. They shrug it off to try to put this verse out here. They know that they're misusing this verse. Knowing this, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of the Messiah Christ. So, my question is, and, and, and see, this is why, brothers and sisters, we tell you that Christianity is about that changing God. That God that changes. He changed. Now, Paul is saying, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but all nations. All, let me tell you something. When Paul says the works of the law, always go back to Romans. Always go back to Romans chapter 9. Always go back to Romans chapter 9 and read verse 31 and 32. But Israel, which followed Israel, Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, Israel, Israel was the only one to do the works of the law. Israel was the only one to do the works of the law. Caucasians did not do the work of the law. They had nothing to do with the law at all. Only Israel done the works of the law. The Chinese didn't do the works of the law. The Japanese didn't do the works of the law. The white man so-called didn't do the works of the law and the African didn't do the works of the law. The only one that done the works of the law as proven in this text is Israel. But they, when it says they, the they were those by the works of the law. I don't know what happened to that, but come back. But as it were, by the works of the law. So Israel was the only nation on the planet at any time to do the works of the law. So my question is, if Israel is the only one that done the works of the law, why in the world does the white man even go here? He never done the works. And we're going to show you. He, he, he wasn't part of the law. You can see the deception now. He was never part of it. John 18. John 18. Verse 31. John 18, verse 31. You got to pay attention to this now. Then said Pilate, the white man, Edom, unto 
Zoom. Zoom. Judge, take him. Judge him according to your law, which means that the Caucasian wasn't even under the law. Neither did they do the works of the law. But they're trying to teach the Bible. They weren't even part of the law. They weren't even part of the history of God except the history that were provided in Psalm 74 and Daniel 8, them destroying the first and second temple. The Caucasians destroyed the first temple. The first temple as the Greeks. And they destroyed the second temple as the Romans. They were never part of the law. They had nothing to do with the works of the law. Again, the witness is there. You, you ought to be able to see that. Acts. Oh, my fault, bro. I, I got... I wouldn't put this Charles Stanley on the screen just to show. Acts, again, Acts 18. Acts 18. Verse 14. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio, now Gallio is a Greek. He's talking to the Greeks. In which our people was among them. The true Israelites were among those Greeks, but he's talking to the Greeks. So here is a Greek that is going to respond. Watch this. Saying, this fellow persuaded all men to worship contrary according to the law. So Paul was supposed to be contrary according to the law. Paul was supposed to be contrary according to the law. But in Acts 24 verse 14, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul worshiped according to the law and to the prophets. But the Pharisee, this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. Wait a minute, but Paul worshiped by law. He worshiped by the law, but the Pharisees are saying that they persuade, he persuades others to worship God contrary to the law. Which one is it? See, when you, contrary to the law, Christians try to make you think that this law, let's go back and look at Acts 6. We're going to look at this law. Acts 6, 13, and set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. The holy place had a law, and it was sacrifice. Sacrifice. The law was also sacrifice. Paul worshiped according to the law, but not according to the sacrificial law. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at this more. For we have heard him say, this Messiah of Nazareth shall destroy the temple and change the customs which were sacrificed, which Moses delivered unto us. Wink, wink. The law of Moses was the customs of that place, which means the law of Moses was sacrificed. We're coming with a podcast episode, brothers and sisters, to prove that. The law of Moses was sacrificed. It was The Ten Commandments were before Moses. They were before Moses. So when we go back, to Acts. Acts 18. Verse 13. Saying, this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law, which is the temple. Because Paul worshipped and believed everything written in the law in Acts 24, 14. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason with that I should bear with you. 
but if it be a question of words and names and of your law, meaning that Greek was not doing the works or under the law. They were not under the law, nor did they do the works. White people wasn't even involved in the law. They were involved in the destruction of the temple twice, but they never done the law. That's why, brothers and sisters, they got to, that's why this is, is, this is so important you understand why Christ is white, according to their theology. Why the Jews would be white, according to their theology. Why everything is white, because of their theology. Because if you find out these people weren't under the law or done the works of the law, you would know their place. And you would also know that Joel Austin and Charles Stanley are both devils. And they have their black men by their side, which is the false prophet. He is the beast and he is the false prophet. There is no other prophet, Amos, Amos 2, verse 11. Amos 2, 11. And I raised up for your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? The only prophets... The Nazarites came out of Israel. There was no such thing as no Edomite prophet. No such thing as an Edomite prophet. Only prophets were Israel. Or from Israel. So, going back to Galatians. Because we got to get this clear. Galatians. And Paul worshipped and believed everything according to the Old Testament. That's all he spoke was the Old Testament. So what made him say this here? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. What made him say that? He read as a believer in the law that the law did justify you. So what made him come up with this? Because when you're talking to the Christian, they put their heart and soul in these verses. When truly, we know that they're misusing the verse. See, it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Works. There was no works in front of any of the verses we read before. So what is works doing in this? Now, remember the works. No man is justified by the works of the law. Not only Israel done the works. So other nations have nothing to do with this verse. Only Israel done the works. We challenge you pork chop eating pastors because that's what's messing up your brain, that pork. Knowing it's an unclean meat and still trying to convince our people to eat it to their own demise. The only ones that done the works of the law by chapter and verse is Israel. So this verse is talking to Israelites in Galatia. So you're not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of the Messiah Christ. So we're not justified by works of the law, but the faith, that's the only other thing you're justified by is faith. They have nothing else. Brothers and sisters, they have nothing else. You're justified by faith. But Christ, but so if you're only justified by faith, Matthew, if you're only, the only other thing you could be justified is by faith. If you're not justified by the law, you're justified by faith. Warn to you, scribes, Matthew 23, 23. Warn to you, scribes, Pharisee, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of men and innocent cumin, 
and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Faith was a matter of the law, according to Christ. Faith was a heavy matter of the law, according to Christ. Faith, F-A-I-T-H. Faith was a matter of the law, according to Christ. Not just a small matter of the law, but a weightier matter is a heavy matter. Faith is a big, big matter of the law. Huh. Mm. Hmm. Romans. verse 27 where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith two laws in that verse and one of the laws is of faith one of the laws is of faith wink wink one of the laws is is of faith. But sacrifice is not. There is no faith in sacrifice. There was a law that dealt with faith. There was the law of works, which is one law, but the law of faith, which is two. So the law, that's what, why do you think, why do you think it says in Romans 14, 23, Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith for whatsoever is not of faith is transgression. Why did he say that? Because faith is a matter of the law. If you're not doing things of faith, you're in sin. Again, we don't understand how Christians all of a sudden don't know. Second Thessalonians three. Verse one. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. Word of the Lord, which is the law, may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked sinners. Wicked men are sinners, for not all men have faith, showing you that the sinner doesn't have faith. If you transgress the law, you don't have faith. Wicked men that have not faith. A sinner doesn't have faith. Over and over. Even, even in Romans 3. All we're doing is showing you, brothers and sisters, that the Christian church is a bunch of confusion. They're going to try to fool us. Paul writes, do we then make void the law through faith? Do we make void the law through the faith of Christ? God forbid. No. Yea, we establish the law. Faith is the establishment of law. It's the establishment of law. If you're not keeping the law, you don't have it. When you guys see that Galatians, they're, they're, they twisted Galatians and try to make it look like the works of the law were the Ten Commandments. No. The works of the law are the temple and animal sacrifice. So Paul, he's letting us know the, the, the use of wording. 
if you don't know what the words are that are being used, you won't know because they try to go, and, and here it is. I guarantee you I can read all this to them, and the first place they're going to go is right here. And the law is not of faith. That's what they're going to do. They're going to avoid all we said in red and use that one verse. But the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Live in what? What does it mean? But the man that doeth them shall live in them. The man that doeth them shall live in them. Is this the same live as Ezekiel chapter 3, 21? Ezekiel 18, 5 and 9, if he keeps the law, he shall live. Watch, mm, watch this, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about the holy things, holy things live of the things of the temple? They're lit when he says, they that do that law that is not of faith, they shall live by them. They're living by that law, the holy temple. They're going to live by that. But this is how they're going to live. Do ye not know that they which minister about the holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? So when it says live, that is what they're living by, the temple. They make their living off the temple. Their respect came from the temple and circumcision. This is what Paul is talking about. This is the law that it's not of faith, the sacrifice. But if a man does them, he shall live in them. He shall live in these things, which is the temple. They want to try to move the temple out of the way. They can't do that. Even though no other nation done the temple worship but the Israelites, they still try to include themselves. That's what these Christians are doing. Oh, well, let's just know. You're not included. Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of the Messiah Christ. Even we have believed and the Messiah Christ, that we might be justified by faith of the, by the faith of Christ. But Christ said faith was in the law. Matthew 23, 23. Paul says faith was of the law. Romans 3, 27. He even says in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2 that if you're a sinner, you don't have faith. And so in Ephesians, I'm confused again. In Ephesians. Hold on now, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. If faith is a matter of the law, if faith is a matter of the law, that's the only faith. And we know, according, this is why Paul says in Romans, Romans, we, we're showing you. When Paul says in Romans, 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 chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. When it says from faith to faith. It was the faith in the Old Testament and the faith in the New, which is the same as the Old. Faith never changed, but this man, he changed it up under our noses. He's trying to say that a sinner can have faith. No. Keeping Easter, Christmas, Sunday, Baby Day, Dog Day, Cat Day, Bird Day, all of those are the faithless, according to the Bible, the sinner. See, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Ah, the just. Ah, faith to faith. Faith to faith for the just shall live by for the just. Shall, what did Paul, he's, what's going on?
Old Testament now, which was Paul's belief and understanding. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. He doesn't keep the law. When you're not upright, you're breaking God's law. But the just shall live by his faith. Ah, so there was an Old Testament faith. And Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 5, there's only one. The Bible didn't say anybody could live by faith. The just, the justified will live by faith. The just. Man, brothers and sisters, the just shall live by faith. The just, the just shall live by faith. Ezekiel 18 and 5. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, to do what is lawful and right, you're a just man, hath walked in my statutes and have kept my judgments to deal truly, he is just. You cannot change what a just man is. A just man is a law keeper. He shall surely live, saith the Lord God. So a just man is a law keeper. Bottom line. Now you see why they put their heart so hard in that, oh, no man is justified by the law. That's, that's a misuse of scriptures. The just are law keepers. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The law keeper shall live by his faith. The just here is the law keeper, and they're living by faith. Didn't say a sinner can live by faith. It says the just live by faith. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just, as it is written, as it is written in Habakkuk 2 and 4, the just shall live by faith. The only ones living by faith are the law keepers. (sighs) There was no such thing as a sinner living by faith. You that keep Easter, Christmas, baby day, dog day, cat day, bird day, Valentine's Day, all these 4th of July holidays against God's law, you're not living by faith. The Bible never says those that break God's law live by faith. It didn't say that. Galatians 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Mm. For it is evident the just shall live by faith. There it is again. So what is this law? He says the just, the just are law keepers. The just are law keepers. So this law isn't talking about what you think it is, brothers and sisters. If the just which are law keepers shall live by their faith, remember the just, let's keep going. Let's not get stuck. Hebrews 10. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Again, that's the third time Paul quoted Habakkuk 2 and 4. The just are the only ones that live by faith. And the just are the justified, the law keepers. Didn't say sinners were justified by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. But if a, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in them. Watch what watch what Paul says. But we are not of them who draw back until perdition. Ah, perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So we don't draw back until, now remember, 
Paul says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Who were the ones that drew back? But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, unto perdition, unto perdition. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go to Peter. Let's go to Peter. Because I want you to see this very carefully. And even before I do that, let's see if I can go back here. Bear with me just a second. We just have to look for this here because I wasn't planning on going here, but I have to. Because we got to understand perdition. We have to understand perdition. So let's go to Second Peter. I was right the first time. Second Peter three, verse seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Ah, so those that are in perdition, those that are in perdition, those that are in perdition are ungodly men. Those that are in perdition is ungodly men. Those that are in perdition is ungodly men. Ungodly men, ungodly, ungodly men. So let's look and see what the Bible says about ungodly men. See, this is how you see it. To execute, Jude one fifteen, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. And of all their harsh speeches, which ungodly sinners, that's who the ungodly are, sinners. The ungodly are sinners. Have spoken against him. The him is God. But the ungodly are sinners. The ungodly are sinners. So those that are of perdition, remember, un the ungodly are sinners. So Second Peter 3, verse 7 again. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of sinners. So those that are in perdition are sinners. So when we go back to Hebrews 10, remember now, Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Who are they that who are they that draw back? But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition. Ah, the perdition is sin. So again, according to the context, a sinner does not live by faith. Those that are in perdition is the sinners. Jude one fifteen proves that ungodly men are sinners, which we took from 2 Peter 3 and 7. The ungodly men were the men of perdition. And perdition would be committed by ungodly men, which were sinners. But we are not of them that draw back to perdition. We don't hang around sinners because that's who draws to perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. This doctrine of justification, lie, lie, lie. 
Justification is an act of God declaring a sinner righteous. No, he didn't. And free from the penalty of sin. No, he did not. It's a central part of the Christian lie, not message, and a reversal change of God's attitude toward sinners. God never changed his attitude toward sinners. They're still going to die. The Christians teach a changing God. There is no such thing as a changing God. It's still the same and we know it, perdition, we know it, Second Peter. This is how we know God never changed. It's the same, brothers and sisters. Second Peter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. This world is observed unto fire. The heavens and the earth, the powers that be, are reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of sinners. So the day of fire is still coming to sinners. God did not justify a sinner. That is what we are trying to tell you. And they are trying to tell you in this verse that a sinner is justified. And I didn't mean to say verse, but in this bull crap, you're not justified by the law, but, but sinners are justified. No, they're not. That's what they're saying. If they say a sinner is righteous and free from the penalty of God, that means God is justifying transgressors of the law according to them. Peep game, y'all. Peep game. God isn't justifying no sinners. He's still going to burn them up in the lake. Those that were of perdition were against faith. They teach a type of faith, a type of Christ. The Christians are teaching a changing God. This God changed. He changed. No, he never changed. It's the same. It's the same. It's clear that those works of the law were the temple. You're not justified by an animal sacrifice. You cannot be made just by sacrifices. You couldn't. That's why the Bible, that's why when you look at Acts 13, Acts 13, and even before we read Acts 13, even before we read, I want four verses. Right now, I want four verses. The book of Ezra. And then we're done, brothers and sisters. The book of Ezra 3. I want this one right now. The book of Ezra 3, verse 2. Again, then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shalatiel, and his brethren, and building an altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. We associate Moses with burnt offerings. Moses burnt offerings. Moses burnt offerings. Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 1, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, wilt thou, if thou wilt, canst thou make me clean? And the Messiah put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Watch what Christ says. Watch what, watch what Christ said. And the Messiah said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way show thyself to the priest and offer the gift the gift was the sacrifice that moses commanded ah again you see moses with the gift moses with the gift moses with the gift let's get the, let's get the next witness luke 5 
Luke 5. Now let me finish reading it. And offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So that testimony was the gift he would offer for his cleansiness of his leprosy. He offered a sacrifice as Moses commanded. Moses. Luke. Luke 5. Same thing, Luke, Luke's going to record the same thing. Let's get to the point. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest. Ah, there was a priest. And offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded. Again, the offerings was Moses. Moses. The law of Moses was associated with the offering. For a testimony unto them. That's Acts 6. Acts 6. Here's where it's at. Acts 6. Acts 6. Verse 13. And set up false witnesses. Talking to Steph, Bob Stephan now. And said this man ceased not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. Hmm. The law. For we have heard him say that this Messiah of Nazareth shall destroy this place, which is the temple, and change the customs of the temple, which Moses delivered unto us. Again, you saw four verses, four verses, Ezra 3 and 2, Matthew 8 and 4, Luke 5, verse 14, Acts 6, 14. The law of Moses was associated with sacrifice. That's why it says in Acts 13, can't get by us, Christian. We're going to take you everywhere. We could, I could take you to 100 more scriptures dealing with the law. You know, it, it's over now. Pay attention. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses, which was the temple. We know what Moses associated with the temple. We gave you four verses to show you that Moses was offerings. Offerings. Four verses that shows that the law of Moses is offerings. That's for 3 and 2, Matthew 8 and 4, Luke 5, 14, and this one. And then and, and, and Acts uh, 6, 13 and 14. When it came to the name of Moses, it was with the temple. Four times we showed you. How many witnesses do you have to have? Ezra 3 and 2, Matthew 8 and 4, Luke 5, 14, and Acts 6, 13 and 14. When it came to Moses, it talked about the offering, the holy place, the temple. No man is justified by the sacrifice of an animal, but he's justified by the Ten Commandments, though. He's justified by these, but not the sacrifice. And the sacrifice were called the works of the law. A lot of people have failed to Galatians 2.16, but not us. Every time you see the law of Moses, it's associated with the holy place, the temple, the offering, the sacrifice. That's the law God gave Moses. Abraham had his own set. Abraham had his own set of laws that he kept, but he didn't do any. He didn't keep the sacrificial law, though. Abraham didn't. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Abraham had laws, too, but he didn't have this one. This is the law that Abraham did receive the book of Exodus chapter 24 Exodus 24 
and verse 7. And Moses took half of the half half of the blood and put it in a basin and half of the book blood and sprinkled let me go back and Moses took half of the blood and put it to put it in a put it in basin and half of the blood and sprinkled it on the altar he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people and they said all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all the words of the commandments. So you were made a covenant with by blood, by blood. This was given to Moses, not Abraham. Moses, Moses, that's why the Bible says in Psalms 50 verse, Psalms 50, Psalms 50, because it was a covenant, Psalms 50 verse 5, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, that covenant by sacrifice was the covenant of of blood the blood of the bulls and of the goats would give you forgiveness of sins like it says in Leviticus 4 verse 28 31 and 35 you got to understand the law there was a covenant made with them by blood that the offerings the offerings would give you forgiveness of sin but justification to be made just it's not with the blood of a bull and goat. You can't. But you are justified by faith, which was a matter of these. Matthew 23, 23, Romans 3, 27. See, these Christians, brothers and sisters, these Christians, they teach a changing God. And a changing God is a false God because the Bible never said he changed. All praises to the most high brothers and sisters. I'm your host, the Ab Apostle Reuben of IUPR Bible Radio Podcasting out of Little Rock, Arkansas, to the true saints of the most high God. Important we learn it because it's getting hot. Second Timothy 2 and 5, if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. IUPR Bible Radio teaches all scripture from Old to New Testament. We realize that the scriptures may offend a lot of people offend a lot of people and it is but we must teach all things adding or taking away nothing and with that brothers and sisters all praises and we'll see you again